This podcast is brought to you by Most Valuable Podcasts, saving your day from boredom with the best podcasting entertainment. What's up, what's up? Real MVPs, Ricky Widmer here, along with fellow man child Johnny Carl. And welcome into the Rick and Johnny podcast right here on Most Valuable Podcast. This is the podcast where we talk about everything that is under the two nerdy sons and Brandon or Johnny, I almost called it Brandon. Rude. Johnny Come on, man. which Get the names right. is funny because we were Dave and I were at Best Buy. Um, this past week to get my new headphones that you mm-hmm. may see on my head that cost me nearly four hundred dollars um, of my own dinero um, to get. I've got the not sponsored, but I have uh, some nice new um, Sony headphones on my head. And while we were at Best Buy, we saw pop figurines for Rick and Morty, and I basically picked one up and I went to say Rick and Morty. But I said Rick and Johnny, and Dave's like, nope, that's not what that show is called. That is what your <laughs> podcast is called. And I was like, oh, they are synonymous in my head. Although we are, we talk about Rick and Morty. I don't think we are Haven't anything been for a while. like, but I don't think we are anything like Rick and Morty. It's no. namesake alone yeah. is why we chose that. But we had a jam-packed show for you guys. Before I get into that, a little bit of housekeeping here at the beginning. Make sure to check out patreon.com backslash most valuable podcast if you want to help support us we cannot do what we do each and every week without the support of our patrons ten dollar tier you can join a podcast each and every month you are at that tier you can also help us by getting yourself an mvp t-shirt that is down below in the description or at most valuable podcast.com you can catch mvp each and every day and then last but not least make sure to go on to apple Podcasts and itunes rate and review the rick and johnny podcast on Apple Podcasts and iTunes, and when we get new reviews, I read them on the podcast right here. So if we had a new review, I would go ahead and read it live on the podcast. All of the new reviews we get in, I read them live as we get them to show thank you to you guys. But Johnny, jam-packed show, like I said. We're taking a look at Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Some stuff kind of going down there. We're going to then kind of meander over into Game of Thrones because... uh, the one thing I forgot to mention is this is our last episode or our last recording of 2018. It's been a great year with you, my man. Uh, what this has been? What year two? Mm-hmm. Is this year two of the year two? It feels longer. It feels like we've been doing this podcast for like five years, and which is funny because we haven't even been doing MVP for five years. It's been what three years? Three, four years, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, if you go really back into the dark ages. Um, before we kind of started getting our shit together and be like, oh, this is what we should do. Before I was even like an inkling of, hey, we should do a show. You were just a speck in my eye, Johnny, a speck in my... Well, because because I came up with the Rick and Johnny podcast and it was like, oh, we should do... Well, I should say this. We came up with it together. We've always said, hey, we should do a podcast. I was the one that said, hey, do you seriously want to do it? The start was a very different idea. Yes, very different. But I'm glad what it has kind of molded into Mm -hmm. Uh, but we're going to take a little then step sideways into some game of thrones because the new year means last season of game of thrones is closer than ever so we're going to take a look at right daenerys Mm -hmm. this spring it's coming back it's coming back and i can't wait for it and then we're going to look at avengers and the x-men because kevin feige dropping some uh not news but some stuff that could be kind of misconstrued as oh what are you gonna do Uh, plus there's either hints or it's it's plus what's the other thing if you ask google assistant or if you say hey google uh tell me about hugh jackman's movies they're going to tell you about avengers endgame we're going to look at that and then we'll also i'm going to surprise johnny and ask him if one actor who i am leaving as a surprise for johnny how he would feel if he played wolverine in the next incarnation of the avengers or of the x-men i should say but johnny let's jump into into the spider-verse and this is one both you and I saw the movie because of um, Johnny being sick the past few weeks. We were unable to get the review out to you. I thought it was a fantastic movie. Um, art style was amazing. Music was awesome. Yeah. John Mulaney was great. Um, Nicolas Cage probably stole the show. Um, in my, it, That's a hard one to pick show stealer because yeah. Jack Johnson was great. Um, Mulaney was awesome. 
and Nicolas Cage probably stole the show. That's who I would go with. Your thoughts on Into the Spider-Verse before I set up what we're going to talk about with a sequel. No, that was great. Um, sequel, already talking about that, huh? Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's going to be today. Uh, <laughs> no, that was great. Um, the art style was like pretty cool, having like going back and forth, like each universe having its own art style mm-hmm. as well. Like how each character was shown in a different um, art style, not to mention flipping back and forth from like animation to comic mm-hmm. was really cool dynamic too. A well, little and bit also dizzying, like but... the explosion, it was like, it wasn't like, a, oh, here's an explosion. It was like pixelation. And I yeah. get that they're going in between the multiverses or the universes, spider-verses. Yeah, but it was like cool how they did that pixelation where it was like squares on top of each other Mm -hmm. and hey we're gonna make this one a little bit faded out than the other one so you can see the other one dave also was like fantastic movie he recommends it um 10 out of 10 for dave elster but the reason why i bring up a sequel is because amy pascal you can't talk about sony movies without taking a look at the woman in charge amy pascal she kind of teased some into the spider-verse sequel plans and some new characters as well. This is um, in an interview with Vanity Fair. And from the article here where I'm getting it from SuperheroHype.com, it says, additionally, the next film, let's see, where's the exact quote? Uh, la, 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 la. Where's the exact one that I want to read? Right here. Pascal confirmed that the second Into the Spider-Verse installment will be directed by... Um, Joaquim Dos Santos, uh, Avatar The Last Airbender. Um, David Callahan, Wonder Woman 1984, is writing the screenplay, which plans to explore Miles Morales and Gwen Stacy's blossoming romance. Pascal said that was a plot thread included in Peter Lord's original draft of the script. However, it did not make the film's final cut. Lord also explained that Gwen's prominent role in the movie was largely driven by producer Christina Steinberg. I will say that Christina kept us honest, he said. As five boys making a movie, it was really good to have another filmmaker there going. I don't think you guys want to do it like this. Additionally, the film will act as a launching pad for the previously announced spinoff headlined by female spider characters. Beside Haley Steinfeld's Gwen making her return in this film... Pascal revealed that it will also feature feature the Jessica Drew version of Spider Woman, as as well as Cindy Moon slash Silk, who still has a live action film in development at Sony. I think it's great that we're going to be able to tell movies about female superheroes in this realm and in the live action realm as well, because I believe that there are going to be characters that really resonate uh, for people. They're funny and quirky and different and heroic in all kinds of different ways that only animation allows you to do so. Perhaps more surprisingly was Pascal's insistence that the live-action Sinister Six team-up movie is still a possibility. Um, Drew Goddard famously left his role as showrunner of Marvel's Daredevil to write and direct the movie, blah, blah, blah. And the reason why I add that last part is I want to ask you this question, Johnny, is we're kind of going to get into our wish list for a sequel. Mm -hmm. But first we got to dive into what Sony actually has planned for a sequel. So I'm going to ask you this to start. How are you feeling after hearing? Cause I saw, I saw your head. Uh, You kind of made a face um, when I I mentioned, when I made the reference to a romance um, between uh, Gwen and Miles kind of blossoming in number two, what were your thoughts when you hear that, though? Because me, I'm kind of like, eh, I get it's there, but, like, is that what we're going to use as the linchpin for a second sequel? I just... <laughs> and spoilers. Well, for a sequel. Spoilers for anyone who didn't see Into the Spider-Verse. Thank you. Um, it's not physically going to work. Mm-hmm. We know, we learned this in Into the Spider-Verse. It's not going to work. Because they can't coexist They can't together. coexist in the same, in, in a universe that's not theirs. Mm-hmm. So how do you have a blossoming relationship in a universe you cannot stay in? Does she find Miles in her universe? And he finds Gwen in his? Is he still, like, are they? Is it just the whole doppelganger problem? Is it? Is that it? Like, for me, I 
I get it and I don't get it because I get it because you need a romance. Yeah, you do. You do need a romance. And plus, like, Gwen and my like, the way they wrote Gwen and Miles' character, mm-hmm. it worked on camera, or it worked on camera, I should say, on camera in air quotes because it's animation. Yeah. It's not like the actors' chemistry together. But I mean, I see that and I go, I get it. You want that romance. But also, I'm sitting there going, like you said, you told me in your movie that these two characters cannot coexist together. So yeah. that's going to be a problem. Unless the whole, like, does that mean the whole part of the movie or the plot of the movie is going to be them trying to figure out how they could be together? Because then I look at that and go, now we're not talking about a superhero movie. We're talking about a love story. And yeah. I get that people will say, like, oh, well, Ricky, you could do a superhero movie that's a love story. Yeah, but what I just said. Deadpool. <laughs> them, yeah, Deadpool. <laughs> them trying to figure out how to do this, okay. it kind of moves into, like, love movie territory. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like a romantic movie. And I'm not saying, like, that. I'm not saying it can't work for Sony. I just think it's a very interesting way to go. With it's a very this. interesting like launch pad for your sec your sequel. Mm-hmm. Not like exploring more universes mm-hmm. or whatever else. It's that's the and again, make me make that part of it, or maybe figure out like find a loophole in the can't exist in another person's universe See, thing. If I was Sony, and here's my wish list for a sequel, get yeah. right into it. Scrap that romance. Like, not the romance, but your plans for an actual sequel, scrap it. Throw it off the table. The plans To make that the actual... The plans that they have for the spinoff with Jessica Drew, Gwen, and Silk, make that your sequel. Yeah. Make your sequel. All right, we... We went into Miles' universe. We're now going into Gwen's universe. Well, wasn't Silk supposed to be live action one? Y- yes, but... So, that's the thing. Silk is in development for live action, Mm -hmm. but she'd also be a character in this. That works for me. So, I mean, that to me, that's what I'm looking at. My first thing is, if I'm starting my wish list, we saw, like, I get you want Miles Morales in it, but also at the same time, what was the post credit scene that we saw? Yeah. We saw the, um, I'm trying to think of the actual name, Spider-Man 20... 2029, I think. Is it 2029? Let's see, 2029, 20, Spider-Man. I, I know it's Miguel. Um, yeah, I think you're right. 2029. 20, yeah, that's it. Spider-Man 2099. Oh, 2099. 20, 90, 90, well, um, but so we see, saw, we're close to that one then. We saw that Spider-Man and basically have the 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 goober. It's not a goober, <laughs> it's a gizmo. Um, I think that's what she said. But basically, you've got the device where he can now jump. Between multiverses. That's so, true. I also wonder, too, was that them teasing, hey, I know we told you there's this problem about them going in between find universes. Find a way to sort of fix that. Is Miguel going to find Miles? Miles is going to be like, oh, wait, I can use that and use that to try to get back to Gwen and talk to Gwen. And then, like, is it going to be something where, hey... Miles tries to use that technology to, let's say, get to Gwen, and then whatever problem there is, we're in Gwen's universe now instead of Miles. Yeah. Is that what we're looking at then? Maybe. Is that what we're thinking for? It? Big threat in hers instead of his. What would you think? What, start adding to my... I'm I'm cooking here. I'm throwing stuff in the pot. Start taking stuff out, throwing stuff in. I'm just trying to think, Um, because you got him, and I mean... it. Was thrown in as more of a spoof because then he went to the origin and mm-hmm. went over to the 1939. You're, you're pointing at me. Why are you pointing? No, you you're pointing at, pointing at me. At who who pointed first? Spider Man. Spider Man pointed first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I don't know if that was just like a throw in spoof or if that's like the start. I think it was a little column A, a little column B. It yeah. Was something to get us like laughing at the end of the movie. But I do also feel like the whole goober thing of, uh, the thing that went on his wrist, that was them kind of going, hey, I know we had this problem, but we fixed it because their plans are to dive into this romance. With yeah. Gwen and didn't and something at the end happen where like something opened up and she's like, hey, Miles, and he, or am I just imagining I don't that? remember that. I don't either. I so. don't. 
Um, it could like you're talking before the credits. Yeah, I don't think so. I would have to rewatch. Yeah, it so that. I okay. Well, um, anyways, but uh, I do like I said the after credit they do have the goober now, which yeah. Explains so that. that would be an interesting concept of him either taking it or ask. Well, probably start by asking for one mm-hmm. and then go saying, "Well, I need this." Yeah, and he just kind of takes it, and maybe that's like a then Miguel is trapped in. Miles, Miles is, is well. Miles is helping out, and they can kind of do a cross back and forth. There's a story there, and I'm not, and that's the thing that I hate about it. Like, there's a story there, but for me, I feel like, I feel like the main thing I want for a sequel is let's not be in Miles's universe anymore. No, we I agree. were there we, in the first one. We were there. So do like Gwen's mm-hmm. or um, what well, I forgot was Spider Man Noirs. No, we're going to Nicholas Cage's. <laughs> That'd be funny. But no, I was thinking of uh, we're going to Spider Thirty something year old, forty something year old Peter Parker. Jack Johnson's character. Jack Johnson, yeah. <sighs> that that would be a fun universe. His Spider Man down on his luck. Um, <laughs> well, so- then we can see him like. How what he's d- done since then, like mm-hmm. go and talk to MJ. MJ who played, was played by Zoe Kravitz. Didn't, yeah, didn't realize that until no, I didn't after either. the fact. Uh, but yeah, like so, like getting back up on his, mm-hmm. like going back up instead of being down on his luck. Here's another question that popped into my head just now. Yeah, um, Dave has brought this up when we've talked about Into the Spider Verse, and when it comes to a sequel. Do you think, because in Dave's mind, he has said he is worried about a sequel because he kind of feels like they caught lightning in a bottle with this movie, where the reason what made it great was the art style was new, the music was fresh, like, this was a take that no one had done before. Like, True. visually, audio audio. It might be one of those ones you want to hold off for a while. Like, art... Are they going to do it? And then we're going to go, okay, you did this already. Like, what new can you add to it to keep it fresh? Well, like I said, adding those new universes and maybe and having them being in a different art mm-hmm. style as well mm-hmm. would definitely do it. Sure, so that saying, would like, help. Per universe, the art style. Yeah, changes no, change up. the universe, change up art style per the universe. Because, mm-hmm. like, the, um, I don't know what her name was, but is that Spider? Penny Parker. Penny Parker. Was very anime esque. Mm-hmm. You had um, Spider Ham was still cartoon esque. <laughs> very uh, cheese, cheese like cheese cartoon. You had the cheese mo on there. You thought Aquaman was cheesy. John Mulaney coming at you with the Spider Man that's extra cheesy. Exactly. And then you had uh, Noir, which was drawn mm-hmm. <laughs> where he couldn't even see color. Yeah, like ooh, that would is be this in- purple? That would be interesting. Going all the way there, and it's just all in black and white. Spider-Man Noir, all black and white. Like, but he, the thing, like, in going off of like Dave's question is, first off, I am worried about that too. Yeah, like I feel like they caught lightning in a bottle here. I'm also worried that Sony is. I I feel like I've seen this book before, and I've read this book before of a studio that gets really ambitious and plans all these movies um, because they had one that did really good. Um, so now, oh my God, we're gonna plan all these, um, and those movies didn't do well. Mm-hmm. Um, and that careful. was DC. If yeah. you don't know who I'm talking about, and I only worry with Sony that because that's why I brought up the Sinister Six thing too, because you're planning, you're gonna have a third Spider-Man movie. I think that's the last one, or no, um, Far From Home is the last one on the contract because Infinity or Avengers technically counts as one yeah so you had homecoming avengers and far from home so you got that's the last of the tom holland unless that deal has come up you're talking about spy into the spider verse number two you're talking about a spin-off of into the spider verse you want a sinister six movie you want a jessica drew movie if you don't have marvel keep tom holland and you start doing them on your own you're going to make another Tom Holland movie. You'd be stupid not, not to. to have one. That to me is five movies already that they would have in development. Potential Venom two. Potential Venom two. There's six. There are six movies right there that they would have in development. Did you say the Cindy Moon Silk one? There, I did. Okay, because I, I know you said Spider Woman. Yeah, because we got Sp- We got Silk. Uh, the Into the Spider Verse two. The spinoff of Into the Spider Verse two. Tom Holland's Spider-Man, barring they don't 
let Marvel keep doing it. Um, and then what? Venom two and Sinister Six. So that's six. Mm -hmm. Six movies that you would have in development. I just feel like that's t me personally. I feel like that's too many. Don't dive in too quickly. Exactly because you did good with Venom. You did really good with this one. It's like playing Risk. When you play Risk, there's one thing my spread dad used to far. always tell me: don't spread yourself out too thin. Mm -hmm. Don't start attacking, 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 and oh, I have all these bases, but I only have one guy, exactly one or two guys guarding all these. Same thing, I think is usable here where don't spread yourself out too thin where it's like we're focusing on all these because think back to into the spider verse they were only dealing they didn't have to deal with tom holland because marvel's taken kind of the head with far from home and avengers because of how it fits into their plan mm -hmm. you look at the only other movie that they had to like put together was into the Spider Verse and Venom. So you had what two this year that yeah. you had to focus on. Two is a lot different than, than six. six. And I get that in development, like in development, hell, there's been a Batman movie that's in development for how long? Like we were talking, we did a segment where what Reese was supposed to have a script in by what was that Memorial Day or Labor Day? And now it's like, oh, he should have his revised script in by the end of the year. I'm thinking we're never going to see that Batman movie anytime soon. No, I'm not planning um, on it. So you could come at it where in development just means, yeah, they're in development. They're writing it. When we will see it is anybody's guess. But any final thoughts on any of this that you think we should hit before we dive over into Game of Thrones? They line? just need to be careful of what, um, not doing too much, too much at one time. Mm -hmm. Butting off more than you can chew. Let's stick with the ones that, like, maybe hold off on, on Into the Spider-Verse 2 mm -hmm. or spin off necessarily for a little while. Or make the spin-off the sequel. Yeah, make this or make the spin-off the sequel. Because then you're combining two of them together. Yeah, or but I'm saying, like, focus on Venom 2. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to do the Silk one, put the... Put the Into the Spider Verse on the back burner because you don't mm -hmm. want to have too many things going on at once. Plus, like you got you and David both said, it's lightning in a bottle. How often do you mm -hmm. get that a second time? Okay, hey, let's put this put this on the back burner. Focus on a different character. Put some years in between the sequel. Exactly. And put make some time. Pe make people almost forget about it. Exactly. Before you come out with that second one. Yeah, you know, I I would totally like agree. Like extra with that. long planning phase. Let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> air quotes in development. Yeah, exactly. It's in development. Well, let's guys. make sure that in development is quite a little bit of time in between, <laughs> and don't take off, don't bite off more than you can chew, Sony. No, exactly. But also, go ahead. Make that deal with uh, Marvel again because they're keeping your <laughs> keep Tom Holland in the MCU. I mean, make a deal where like you guys can use him too if you mm -hmm. can, and then. Just make sure he's still in the MCU, because unless they don't want him, yeah, I think it's working out for you guys. Mm -hmm. No, I I would say let's go ahead and keep Tom Holland in the MCU, because I think he's working really well Yeah, um, over there. But this is where you guys come in. Let us know what you guys think down below in that comment section about Into the Spider-Verse sequel, Sony spreading themselves out too thin, potentially, anything that we had mentioned in this segment. Yeah.